Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing great. Danny Dan here and welcome back to Danny's Recreational Space. First of all, I'd like to thank from the very bottom of my heart all the new subscribers to the channel. I feel honored to have you here and I'm very grateful for your support. If you like what I do and want to see more of it, then please help the channel grow by leaving thumbs up, subscribing and sharing the content. It doesn't cost you nothing, but it does make a huge difference to me and to the upcoming projects. And also please consider direct donation through Patreon or PayPal. That will help me to post content more often, giving the opportunity to many more projects to see the light. And with that out of the way, let's celebrate together with some Prosecco Italian sparkly wine. Cheers! Talking about sparkling wine and recycling, I have to say there's a part that has always captured my imagination. The cork wire cage. One of those things I've always felt bad throwing away, since they have got their own aesthetics, I believe. It's also true, though, that I have never really succeeded in making something cool or different with them. I kept them in great numbers, hoping that one day I will come up with an idea, <laughs> and today, as a matter of fact, I turned them into stools. My son, you can do better than this. Change your perspective. So I went back to thinking. I started again. I tried real hard and this time I turned them into scales. Come on, Danny Dan, you can do better than this. You have to become the cork wire cage. Become the cork wire cage. You finally succeed. That's it, my son. That's it. After using a section of a plastic tube to space apart the two lids, I wrap all around a medium-sized zip tie. I sem the whole thing and I'm basically ready to glue the legs onto it. And I do so using a mixture of super glue and baking soda. The main body of the droid consists in this nicely shaped tube, the origins of which are very obscure. All around it I glue a second wire cage, meant to become the droid's mechanical arms. And then I also glue some other random micro bits to make the surface look more interesting, more droidy, you know. On the very top, I position a bell-shaped bead. To make the eye, or let's call it the interface, I found among my collection of scraps this pot-looking bit, and this bit here, that looks like the eye of a fly, and they fit together perfectly. Once attached to the main body with a pin inside to make the connection stronger, I then connected the eye with the bead with a tiny hose. Of the four mechanical arms that this droid has, 
Two of them are meant to end with mechanical claws. I saw the shape of a claw at the ending part of these peculiar looking zip ties. It was you who taught me the ability to see things in things when I was only a kid. Do you remember, Master? I do remember, my son. To secure the claws to the arms, I made me plastic pins, cutting these Christmas ornament hooks. Only because this plastic is very thin and brittle. And afterwards, with a lighter, I melted two sides of the pin to create rivet-looking studs. The other two mechanical arms of the droid are accessorized with utensils. This bit here it seemed proper when I tried to come up with something that resembled a welder. And to make the welder tip, I thought I would use part of a sprue. Same old lighter technique here. And now it's finally time to wire the utensil and check if it works. This droid also carries a powerful circular saw. To make it, I use the plastic gear wheel. The gear wheel is then connected to the robotic arm with a fake Lego brick connector piece and uh, another bit that fits the purpose just fine, I'd say. I have to be careful in getting the connections right. And it works! Cool! I also plan to make little feet for this droid. To do so, I use part of a disposable razor. I think this piece here, it has got the proper section and it really resembles a foot. I shaped it with a drill and a utility knife. To attach the little feet to the legs, I bend some iron wire and make the connection steady with super glue and baking soda. In my opinion, there still is room for more details. I add clasps and hooks on the lower part of the body, wires hanging from the bottom part, a piece of a toy, the antenna, exhaust pipes in the back of the head. And then I also made this auxiliary eye or camera or laser, I'm not sure what that is, using a hang tag string for clothes, which is a pretty fancy name for this interesting bit here. I used the tiniest spring I could find to attach it right onto its head. Using a transparent plastic sheet from a blister, previously sanded and properly bent to follow the curve of the body, I made some plates to make the surface more interesting. Help, help! The droid's got my finger! Don't be silly, my son! And eventually, after putting some rivets here and there, I'm finally ready to paint. So this is how I painted Aggiusto, the fixing droid. After priming the model with a grey coating from Tamiya, I move on laying silver paint onto the parts of the body I will later paint in violet, but also the mechanical parts and onto the base. This small diorama base is made using a series of strapping bands glued one next to the other on a small hexagonal shaped MDF plate. 
a mechanical arm I made connecting a zip tie with a modified broken Lego brick rests on the ground, lifeless. Then I used white acrylic to cover all the spots I will later paint in blue, hoping the blue will pop up more easily. I guess this would not be necessary using a white primer. I smear with extreme generosity all over the base a mixture of burnt umber oil painting and white spirit. And then I remove the excess with a tissue and this is the result. If you ask me, I think this technique is amazing. Very easy to master, but of such great effect. I love it. Then I use this same technique onto all the mechanical parts of the droid. And Master would be proud of me if he only could see this. I said, my son. The parts previously colored in white are then covered with acrylic blue. When the blue is dried, I covered almost the whole body with this violet oil painting, diluted in white spirit. After the violet color dried, I experimented a bit smearing some orange oil paint, here and there, to make some nice color contrasts. I then realized I could also use the orange to make a rusty effect and got pretty carried away, but it started to look too orange in my opinion, at least on the body. To fix it, I used some silver paint, just the one I used in the beginning. And here's how it looked like after an indiscriminate zenithal silver dry brush. Well, I really had a great time working at this project. If next time you uncork a bottle of sparkling wine, champagne, prosecco and so on, you will look at the cork wire cage from a new different perspective, I then have already won. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye!